Welcome to On Open Source. Conversations with thought leaders in the open source community. Brought to you by So, Luke, Laura, why don't you give us a little bit of background about who you are and what you do and uh, how you guys managed to make it off the soap opera. <laughs> we escaped. It was after I fell down the stairs and lost my memory. Um, <laughs> we've been involved with PHP for about 10 years now. Um, right. Luke and I started off on a project building online legal services like before the first web explosion. Uh, and we actually started off writing it in Perl and then it was like, well, we could use PHP. It was new, it was shiny, and everybody was talking about it. So yeah, we, we started working with it. And then we came home really frustrated because there were no good books on PHP, so we were forced to write one. Um, and forced? Forced, yeah. Yes. Absolutely your, forced. Your editors uh, held a gun to your head and said, you must write this book or else. That, that was halfway that. through but the project, actually. Yeah, halfway through the project. <laughs> <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't really get it right at the start. It was only when we were behind schedule. Yeah, that right. we yeah. Editors have a funny way of doing that. <laughs> they do. Right? They're they all do. sweetness and light when you sign the contract, and then, you know, <laughs> then, then the whips and the chains and the... You know some editors. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> I've written a couple myself. Thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so... Um, you wrote the book, and then you said that said, I'm never going to touch PHP again. No, we said we'd never write another book. Um, but we've been working for Every it. author says that. They yeah. get done with their book, and they say, I'm never going to do it again. And you went and did another one, didn't you? We did. The first, but the first book, PHP and MySQL Web Development, is like 1,100 pages now, right? We're doing the fourth edition, plug, plug. Um, but the, <laughs> the other book... The second book. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the advice we always give books, people always ask yeah. us whether they should write a book. Yeah. Um, and the advice we always give people is write a short book. <laughs> um, which, and, and we, we, or at least we stuck to our own advice for the second one. Yeah. And um, so you went from 1,100 pages down to... 150, 150 something uh, like that. Yeah. MySQL tutorial. So. I wanted to write, write a book that you could read like on the subway on the way to work and read like a chapter a day, assuming you had a short subway ride. You know, right. So it's right. short. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was a PHP book or a That's a MySQL book. That's a MySQL book, book. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, all right. Um, and, you know, you've been doing this for 10 years now? Pretty much, mm -hmm. yeah. And how has, how has the, 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 the technology changed? I mean, clearly it's not the same thing as it was a decade ago. I actually think the technology has probably changed less than the people using it and how they use it. Mm -hmm. um, like, 10 years ago, we really liked PHP and we wanted to use it on projects because that way we could be efficient and get it done more easily. Um, and we'd have to like either choose to gloss over the technical details to the customer or have to sell PHP to the customer. Mm -hmm. Whereas about sort of four or five years ago, people started coming to us and say, okay, we want you to do this because we want it done in PHP. Like mm -hmm. people started asking for PHP. Um, mm -hmm. And it's it, it's gone from being a, a sort of a, a niche technology um, to being a, a real mainstream force. Yeah. Somebody asked me last year, um, you know, do you see? Are you, are you surprised by which, which large companies are using PHP? And I said, well, I'm surprised when they're not using it because everybody's using it. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's everywhere. Yeah. Now, over the last couple of years, there's obviously been a surge of interest in mm -hmm. Ruby and Rails. Mm -hmm. Oh, I and can rant about this. The, coming from the PHP <coughs> world, mm -hmm. you know, what's what's your thoughts on this? I mean, where where does where does this fit in with the whole you know collection of web technologies? Mm -hmm. may, I, may I rant on that? Yeah, so I have really strong <laughs> opinions about this, um, and have that was, on that frequently. That was a request to rant if I ever saw one. <laughs> Please, um, so. Ruby on Rails is interesting, and just as a bit of a disclaimer, I've been managing a Ruby on Rails project for the last 12 months, um, okay. which is just for comparison, and I've ranted about it in my blog as well and elsewhere. Um, and there's another piece of background on me. I've been doing MVC programming for a long time. So before I was ever a PHP programmer, um, I had written MVC code in Visual C++. I had written Motif, if people even know what that is anymore. Um, mm. I've been doing MVC I things for a really long time. Motif is. I'm really glad somebody else does. Usually people shudder, and that's my reaction as well. Um, <laughs> So MVC is a design pattern and it's never implemented the same way twice and all that kind of stuff. Um, and PHP also has a bunch of frameworks that have sprung up. I hate frameworks. Um, I don't hate frameworks. Um, <laughs> I just think that having multiple frameworks is worse than having no frameworks. See, I used um, to think that. 
<laughs> I'd, I'd be really happy if like mm -hmm. Zen Framework or something took off mm -hmm. and killed off all the other ones. That'd be great. Um, okay. Because theoretically, mm -hmm. like the main advantage of having a framework Everybody is knows there's a bunch of code that you can reuse, mm -hmm. you can hire new staff, they already know half yeah. the libraries you're using, so you have to drain them. When there Whereas, are 1647 yeah. PHP frameworks, then you lose all those advantages, right? And all you're left yeah. with is like yeah. sort of your application has 5,000 lines or 50,000 lines of somebody else's code in it yeah. Yeah. that you don't know what 95% of it does. They're all bloated, um, a lot of them are really poor code quality. Mm -hmm. So having said that, then I went and used Ruby on Rails and it has some really good features. So there's this whole convention of a configuration thing, which means that you can get started quickly and you understand how the code is laid out, are laid out which helps for maintainability. A couple of things I really don't like about Ruby on Rails is that um, it's opinionated software and it's not my opinion. I'm really opinionated as well and I just happen to not agree <laughs> with the way that DHH wants to do things. Um, <clears throat> I found that the community is kind of immature, which is something that will take care of itself, um, I think. But the you know, it's going to take a few years to get, grow to the level where that sort of it, it, it's, you know, and there, there are some pockets of it that are really good, but just like the PHP community is huge and you get really good answers to your questions. And if you say, you know, I'm running Ruby on Rails on Solaris with Postgres, people don't, people come back to you and say, why would you want to do that? You should just use Linux and MySQL. And it's like, well, but I'm not. <laughs> so <laughs> that doesn't answer my question. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the main issues with it. It's been, it's been an interesting ride though. And I think I was a fan of like any, when you're architecting any PHP project, you should build the simplest thing that could possibly work. Mm -hmm. um, and the problem with sort of any kind of the frameworks, if you look at somebody like Paul M. Jones who's done all these benchmarks where you're sort of pulling in all this code from the framework is that it tends to get really slow. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's a trade-off that you make. But I like sort of simple, clean, performant code. Therefore, I'm not a big fan of frameworks. <laughs> that was a rant. She turns to you. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> I, that was the short version, too. Uh, Honestly, right. I could talk about that for an hour on its own. So. <laughs> Do you see some similarities between PHP and Ruby and Rails? Um, well, I mean, they're both like trying to solve the web problem, right? But kind of, I think they're aimed at kind of a little bit of a different market too. PHP, I think, so it's like Java was for C++ programmers who were frustrated with all the things they didn't like in C++. Mm -hmm. um, Rails, Ruby on Rails, Ruby's a really nice subject-oriented language. Don't get me wrong, I love Ruby. But Ruby on Rails is like for Java programmers who are disenfranchised with all the kind of J whatever. Um, in the same way that PHP, I guess, appeal to like C programmers, like all the flexibility of C without the pointers, basically. I can go and solve the web problem and not worry about like the, the parts of C that allow me to hang myself. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think it, <clears throat> that's kind of one of the similarities. And they do appeal mm -hmm. to different mindsets That's as well, true. I think. Yeah. Um, like PHP is an inherently pragmatic language. Yeah. Um, it's an it engineer's language. It appeals to pragmatic yeah. people. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. who are happy to say, okay, well, let's take this thing from over here and this thing from over mm -hmm. here and let's slash them together with a piece of string and, mm -hmm. and, and, and call it a, a job done if, if we can get that mm -hmm. done quickly and if it'll work for yep. us. Yep. Um, whereas I think Ruby appeals to people who like things to be like Elegant clean and, and pretty yeah. and shiny. Um, and it doesn't bother them so Big much if it takes them. Color gradients. It doesn't bother them so much if it takes them sort of four times as long to get something going. Right. Um, if the end result is prettier. Yeah. Right. Um, oh, no, it, it's quick. So <clears throat> the project I worked on with it, um, we built a prototype really fast, which is, it's good for. Um, but then you're kind of stuck with the prototype code, like that classic problem of being unable to discard a prototype. So, mm. yeah, it's, right. it's interesting. Now, PHP mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. you brought up Java, mm -hmm. Java frameworks. Mm -hmm. Advantages, disadvantages in both directions. It's funny because I, it's it's really hard to come. You know, they're both tools and they're both good tools for what they do. Um, Java is great, PHP is great. You know, Perl is great, Rails is great. All these things are great. ASP.NET's a pretty good tool, especially that's kind of but improved it's not great. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I don't want to say that. Okay, yeah, okay. It's you great. And, and besides, Brian will kill me if I say that. So, um, but. I, know, I, saying, I think they appeal to different markets again, like the Rails thing. So Java is really like the, um, you know, if you're a bank, if you're a big enterprise, if you're like a, a huge shipping company, you can if be you're being Java. paid by line of code, <coughs> right? <laughs> well, there's always that. And Java, the other thing is Java programmers are, um, are a commodity. Like it's really easy to hire Java programmers. There are a lot of them. Um, mm. They tend not. They tend to be quite. Middle, middle of the road too, like Java programmers tend to be really bad or really good, like a lot of sort of good standard, I mean there are some fantastic ones and some really awful ones, but on average like the bell curve has got like really fat middle section. The PHP curve doesn't look like that. <clears throat> the PHP curve has like some fantastic, some really fantastic people and some really awful people, but it's just not as sort of concentrated in the middle, like it's a, there's a lot more awful ones and I think there's a lot more really good ones. It's really hard to hire them as well. Mm. Um, so, okay. yep. For more information, visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.